The volleyball team advanced to the Sweet 16 for the second consecutive season after sweeping Western Michigan and Illinois State over the weekend at the Fieldhouse. Badgers traveled to Louisville, Kentucky to take on Ohio State on Friday at 4 p.m. The winner of that match will then face the winner of the Penn State UCLA game, on s which the winners will meet on Saturday at 3 p.m. Uh, one note availability for the, uh, media availability for the players will be after practice tomorrow. That's at approximately 5 p.m. And credential info for the weekend was emailed out by Diane last night. If you still need that information, please contact her. Head coach Kelly Sheffield is here. We'll have some opening comments and take questions. Well, obviously, we are we're very fired up and fortunate to still be playing. Uh, you know, one of 16 teams, we don't take that for granted. There's a lot of really, really good uh, programs around the country that uh, whose seasons have already ended. So we're, you know, we're we're excited that we still get uh, at least one more week. Uh, Ohio State, uh, I mean, three Big Ten teams here are going to going to Louisville, and that's uh, kind of interesting. Uh, Ohio State, we get an opportunity of playing them for a third time, and and uh, a really really talented team. Um, that looked awfully good against a, a seeded Kentucky team the other day. And so uh, I thought they served and passed better than they have all year long offensively. When, when, they, when they pass, they're, they're a handful. And, uh, and they looked awfully good after uh, uh, game one was, was over. So we're, uh, we've had two days off pretty much. And uh, we're going to get back after it today and get two hard practices in before we take off on Wednesday. And, and uh, have a practice on in Louisville on Thursday before we go uh, Friday night. Rob. The uh, basketball teams have a conference tournament. The football team has a conference championship game. Uh, this, were you ever a proponent of the Big Ten having a volleyball tournament before? And how does it feel, you say, interesting to have three Big Ten teams in one regional such as this? It is interesting. It's, uh, it's interesting that there's three Big Ten teams going to, going to Louisville and there's a Minnesota, which is hosting a, a regional as well, doesn't have a, a single Big Ten team in the in the bracket. Um, uh, conference t tournament, I, I think it'd be exciting. I think it'd be awesome for the fans. I think the players would be uh, excited about playing it. The, the question is, what is the logistics? What's that look like? Does everybody get in? It is it uh, you know football? You just have two teams that that do it. Is that what it looks like from us? Um, you know, it's. Uh, you know, this is toward the end of the semester, so do you take a week to do it? You know, kind of like uh, what basketball does. Uh, you know, that's that's a little bit hard to do as well, uh, going right into the NCAA tournament. I think it'd be exciting. It's just, you know, what does it look like? Uh, are we willing to cut down in our regular season to be able to do it? I, I know it's on the agenda for coaches to talk about. Uh, we're going to have a conference call here pretty soon to discuss it before we meet in person in January. Uh, I know there's there's some people that are pretty passionate about it. Uh, uh, what does it look like? Where is it? All, all those things. Um, uh, but we're probably closer to heading that, down that road right now than what we were maybe a year or two ago. Dennis? Uh, facing a team for the third time, um, they're an emotional edge one way or the other. You've won both of them. Do you expect them to try and change up much? There's familiarity, familiarity on both sides. How does that play out at this point in the season? Well, there's going to be... Um, uh, you know, yeah, you, you're familiar with your opponent. They're familiar with with us. We, you know, we've been on that side of things last year. You know, we we played a match. We played two matches in the NCAA tournament. Uh, uh, that it was our third time, and one of them it was it was split one to one going into that third, and the other one it. Um, uh, we lost the previous two and lost the third. It just, you know, nothing guarantees. There are no guarantees, you know. And you get in a tournament, uh, you better be ready to play your best match. And, and our team is, you know, our, our emphasis is is that this is going to, we're going to be trying to play our best volleyball of the year, regardless of who our opponent is. And, um, you know, you go back and, and you study the, the two matches that we played earlier, but the first time that we played, you know, they – they look very different than what they did then. You know, one of their best players didn't really pl wasn't was just coming back from injury. Um, 
you know, and the team that they played this past weekend looked different than the team that we played a few weeks ago. You know, Ohio State just gives so much different challenges. They they really keep you off balance with their serving game. You know, they serve short maybe more than any team in the country. Um, they change their lineups cons constantly going into matches. And so it's just it's really difficult uh, preparing your team for them. Um, you know, they, they'll move players around from the left, the middle, the right, and um, it, uh, you know, they made a couple changes in that Kentucky match that, um, you know, I think caught Kentucky off guard a little bit, and that's just one of the challenges they give. And so, you know, at this point of the year, yeah, we're going to study our opponents and we're going to go in with a game plan, but I think so much is, of it is uh, you're at this point, anybody's going to be able to beat you. You have to be prepared to play your best match of the, of the year. And... Um, uh, it, you've got to be willing to look yourself in the mirror uh, throughout this week and say, all right, it's, uh, it's go time and I better be ready because you better believe your opponents are going to be ready. Andy. Kelly, it sounded casual, but when you talked about the fact that there are three Big Ten teams where you are and there's just Minnesota up in the Minnesota regional, one could sense a little annoyance in your voice. Is that a fair interpretation? Um, I don't know if it's an, you know, the, 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 co the committee has, I mean, they've got way more information than what I do. I mean, you know, and I'm, who the heck am I? It, uh, you know, it, it would seem to, to make sense when you've got, uh, as many fans that, that go to Big Ten matches that, and predetermined regionals, that, um, there'd be at least one Big Ten team that was, that was in the Big Ten regional that, uh, that, or, or in a Big Ten site. That would just seem like that would make sense, especially, you know, a sport that's trying to, to, you know, maximize our attendance numbers in the NCAA tournament. That seems to be a focus of, of, of our sport and, and of our committee. That, uh, that's something that they could have ins ensured. You know, Nebraska is not too far away. Wisconsin is not too far away. Um, that just would have... I don't know. It seemed like it could have made sense. But, you know, on the other hand, you could, you know, does that mess with the integrity of the bracket? That's possible. You know, I mean, that's – you don't want to do that. It's um, – yeah, would I have loved to have been going to Minnesota so our fans could have hung with us a little bit more and made that easier of a drive uh, for them? Absolutely. Um, am I annoyed? I, I don't know. It's um, – I don't know. They've got a difficult job. And um, – we're going to focus on Ohio State. It was a long time ago when you played Penn State here and it was all the hype in the match and everything and, and lost that match here. How different, better, improved, would you say, has your team changed uh, since, since that meeting? I don't know. You mean the butt kicking? That's what you mean. You can say that. I don't know. I hope we're different. I hope we're better. Um, we've got bad coaching. If we're not better, um, I think they're better as well when, when I'm watching them and watching them go through their season. They've got different personnel. You know, one of the uh, freshmen of the year didn't even play in that match. He hadn't even played that season, I don't think, up to that point. And so they're, they're dramatically different. Um, we've fixed some things on our end, and hopefully we approach a match, uh, uh, the, the game, a, lo a lot better. Um, if we're fortunate enough to play them, they're going to give us a whole lot of handful of issues. UCLA's probably got the most dominant attacker in college volleyball right now, and that will give us a lot of issues as, as well. And um, you know, but to answer your question, are we better than what we were? I, I you know, statistically, that it'll say that we're better a team right now than what we were the first part of the season. Um, I think we we understand our identity a little bit better than what we did at that point. I think even though we only graduated a play, one player, I think we were still trying to figure out who we were uh, the first couple months uh, of the year. I think we have a little bit better understanding of what we are and what we're not. Um, uh, you know, if we get another opportunity to play in the Elite Eight, whoever we're against, we're going to be pretty darn excited about it. You showed last year that uh, experience wasn't a requirement to have success in the tournament. But now that you have that experience with you, what does that? What do you carry from that going forward? And what does? How does that help you? Uh, the, the, 
I didn't have much experience last year, so I answered it that way. Now I've got a lot more experience, and so it's way better for our program. I don't know. It's, uh, you know, I think coaches, you, you, you go one way or the other. You're either, you're either a, a doomsday pessimist and everything is, is, everything is a challenge and a hurdle and you can't be happy with anything, or you go the other way and you sit there and you say, hey, this is an opportunity, whatever it is. And that tends to be the way that I kind of look at it. And so, you know, the – there were some things that we went about last year that, you know, and where, how we were, I thought it, I thought it helped. And, you know, now being here, I think there are some other, other things and how we go about things, I think it helps. Um, I think the main thing is whether you're young or old or experienced or not experienced or short or tall or, or whatever is, is, does your team believe that they're, that they're good? Do they believe that they can – they can do things together, and are they still excited about the season? So many teams, I mean, we tell our teams this all the time. The majority of teams, the majority of teams, my belief is, in any sport, you get halfway through the season, most teams are already, they're already circling the days off on the calendar. I mean, it's just, it's sad, but it's true. It's, it's hard. It is hard being a student athlete. It's hard being committed. It's hard making the sacrifices when the general student population isn't, being forced to do that and you're you know you're going you're waking up and going to the weight room and everybody else is heading home from they look like they're having fun uh disheveled but fun and it's hard to make those types of commitments all the time and so you get about halfway through the grind and it's it's tough and you know but when you have a team that's you know you're fortunate where your leaders are still leading everybody's still buying in and they're still dreaming and they're still playing for things that are bigger than themselves it's kind of cool and so it, uh, to me that's way more important than what the experience level is anything else for coach right. thanks a lot guys thanks kelly